And we're back. We're going to do some electrostatics now. And we're talking about charges flying through electric fields in a way where we uh, see kind of the, the analog to mechanics of projectile motion. So we, we have to remember what projectile motion is and, and how it works. Um, basically, what we're talking about trying to set up a system where you can have a, uh, a constant horizontal velocity, in other words, no horizontal forces, and a constant force vertically, which causes a constant vertical acceleration. When you combine those two motions together, which are independent of each other, they're, they're perpendicular to each other, you get the classic uh, parabolic path, okay, projectile, like a ball rolling off the tabletop. So the way we do this with electricity is, is we use um, the parallel plates, Two flat plates, which you can charge up, you hook them up to a battery, so one has a positive charge, in this case the top one, and the bottom one has a negative charge, and therefore you'll have an electric field. And as long as the plates are flat and, and fairly large, you'll have a what we'll consider to be a, a uniform or constant electric field uh, that, that shoots the gap there. And so let's consider if we have a, something like an electron, a negative charge which comes flying in from the left at some initial uh, horizontal speed, and we'll just see what happens. Now when, when that charge is actually within the field, okay, so that's a negative charge, it's going to feel a force going upwards. And that force is caused by the electric field. That's what electric fields do. So that's one thing we can jot down. That will also be the net force acting on the electron because there, there's really nothing else happening. And so that will also be equal to F equals MA. Okay, so negative charges, remember, go opposite the electric fields in terms of directions. So what we have is uh, we can find the acceleration. That's a vertical acceleration. Okay, uh, so that, that'll become important. That's part of our solution to projectiles. And then uh, the other part's going to be the fact that you have a horizontal motion. And as long as we know, um, you know, however long this thing is horizontally, how long it's going to stay within the electric field, the electron's going to fly in, and in this case actually get pushed upwards in a parabola. So that that'll be the path that it takes. Okay, so if we if we know how far it is from that top plate, we're just calling that y, we can use our constant acceleration of formulas to help us out. Okay, so that distance is going to be one half the acceleration multiplied by time squared. There's also an initial speed. In this case we don't have to worry about it, there is no initial y velocity. And so this allows us to figure out the time it takes before it crashes into that top plate. Okay, so if we solve for time, it's going to be two times that distance divided by the acceleration, and we have to square root that. So that's going to be equal to, if we substitute in our expression for the acceleration, um, 2 times mass times the y distance, and that's all going to be over the charge times the electric field strength. Okay. And then you can do things like, um, you know, find out how far horizontally does it move before it crashes into the plate. So in other words, on our picture, that would be this distance right here. Okay, so Vx, that, that's just a constant again. That's not changing as long as you have no horizontal forces. We figured out how long it takes before it crashes into the top. So we can just plug that in for time. Okay, so that's another result that you can find. You could do things like find out, well, how fast is it moving when it crashes into the plate? The x velocity stays constant, but you could find the, the vertical speed, for example. Okay, 
here's another one of our constant acceleration equations. And again, there's, if there's no initial vertical speed, you don't have to worry about that first term. And then it just becomes acceleration multiplied by time. Okay, so your, your vertical speed at the time of the collision, uh, your acceleration is charge times the field over the mass. And then time we found was the square root. And so on. So you can do all, all the usual constant acceleration type problems. So that's the essence of this sort of setup. Um, you know, you can do projectile motion with charges as long as you have a constant electric field. And that constant electric field replaces gravity for something like the ball rolling off the tabletop or something like that. Um, so I hope this makes sense. It combines a few of the ideas that we have in electricity. Most prominently, it's going to be the fact that fields cause forces. I mean, fundamentally, that's what they do. And then it just becomes the usual game that we play with any kind of projectile problem. So I hope this helps, and until next time, we'll see you later.